Aaron Rodgers, very complimentary. Stephen A. of Adam Silver. What did you make of his comments? <laughs> well, first of all, Adam... Uh, Aaron Rodgers is qualified to make the statement that he made. He's an elite player in the National Football League, one of the more marketable products the National Football League has, therefore um, exposed to a lot of different things, some of the nuances involving the NFL. Um, it's definitely plausible, very, very believable. Uh, but I do think that it's important to recognize that when Aaron Rodgers says something like that and you point the finger at the NFL, the NFL has proven time and time and time again that they are about their money, that they are about the bottom line. And if there's someone uh, or, or a product that's reticent or apprehensive about players taking on specific positions and what have you, social and otherwise, uh, then it's one of those situations where they're saying it's going to affect the bottom line. You all want a part of this money, a chunk of this money. This is ultimately what's going to compromise our bottom line. You compromise our bottom line, we're going to compromise yours. It's not great. It doesn't make the NFL look very flattering, but it does make them look as if they are about their business. And nobody in America, this capitalistic society that we're living in, is going to consider that a crime against them. Having said all of that, where it took me to and where it hit home for me was an article I read in the New York da uh, Daily News. I think the gentleman's name was Ebenezer Samuel. He does a lot of good work for the New York Daily News, and I'm certainly not here to cast any aspersions on him. But I definitely respectfully disagreed with his position because the title of his article uh, in yesterday's New York Daily News was Cam Newton stardom has turned him blind to racism. And he was making the point that Cam Newton should speak up and should speak out. And that instead of doing so, he wants to be tone deaf. And he's alluded to Michael Jordan being tone deaf in the past and a Derek Jeter being tone deaf in the past. I think it's important that people like himself and others, and I respectfully say this because, again, I understand different points of view. I'm just coming from a different perspective. I think it's important that they understand that there isn't one way, just one way to skin a cat. For example, when we look at Michael Jordan, let me tip him and others who feel the same way he felt about Michael Jordan off to something. Michael Jordan may not have been the most outspoken person in the world. There may have been times where various people from the African American community wished that Michael Jordan was outspoken. But we also applaud and appreciate his charitable contributions. And more importantly than anything else, we appreciate the fact that he hires folks from the African American community. He doesn't just talk or, or, or he's not about giving lip service. He's about employing folks. So would we like Michael Jordan to be more outspoken? Sure. But does that mean we diminish the level of appreciation we have for him for not only making sure that he employs African Americans, but also he was never shy about connecting himself to an African American. You want to talk to Michael Jordan in the media and I have been blessed and fortunate enough to interview him. I'm one of the few people he talks to. Mike Wilbon is very close with him, but ain't nobody a Marv Rashad. You see what I'm saying? So when you see a lot of this, these athletes, modern day and otherwise, what you see is a connection. And, 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 and let me be very, very clear. We're not promoting anti-anything. But when you come from a disenfranchised community whose numbers have dwindled, making only 13% of the population, when we lament the fact that there's a a, a lack of, of opportunities or African Americans in certain positions and you have an elite figure within our community who goes about the business of not just employing folks from our community but connecting yourself with individuals from our community so if you want to know something about Michael Jordan you're going to hear from Amar Rashad you want to know something about Michael Jordan you're going to hear from Michael Wilbon you want to know something about Michael Jordan you're going to hear it from Stephen A can you say the same about Tiger Woods not so much. And so when you look, people from our community look at things like that. And what I would say to folks that would say the same things or similar things about Cam Newton, I would say pump the brakes. Cam Newton is a young brother who is a superstar football player who's had his share of troubles in the past and has overcome it with such fervor and, 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 such, and, and, and such impressive behavior as well as performance that he should be far more applauded than ridiculed for what he doesn't do. He is not a figure finished product. He is in his mid twenties. Let's be careful about what we say about him and how much pressure we're willing to heap on him, especially in light of what Aaron Rodgers just said about the NFL. Because Cam Newton wants to make his money, 
but he also wants to make a difference, but he also wants to be smart enough and wise enough to do it in a way that doesn't derail what he's coming at you with. He wants to make sure to elevate it to another level. At some point in time, that means him not always doing things the way we would suggest he do it and with the speed and the timing that we would expect it. Aaron Rodgers highlighting the adversarial position that may put a player in with the National Football League is something that's worth noting because it is very real. And if it is real for a superstar white quarterback, you damn sure know it's real for Cam Newton. So I appreciate what Adam, Aaron Rodgers had to say because it was very enlightening and it was appropriate. I, I want to start with what Aaron Rodgers had to say then get around to your point about Cam Newton. Um, Aaron Rodgers here is bringing up leadership and pointing to Adam Silver. This is a point I made a couple weeks ago when we talked about this. Uh, think about what, what Adam Silver did when the Donald Sterling thing went down. Now, on its face, you could argue that's not enough to kick him out of the league. And I was thinking, damn it, I know what's going to happen in this situation. It always does. It'll be a slap on the wrist, even if it's some suspension or million-dollar fine some rich guy can pay. And Adam Silver got up there and said, these players are our business partners. I'm paraphrasing. And someone just deeply offended our business partners. Goodbye. And he used it as an excuse to get rid of, of a guy who was really a bad influence in the NBA and Donald Sterling. Good riddance, Donald Sterling. And he did it out of respect to the players. Now, contrast that to Roger Goodell, who takes this paternalistic attitude toward the players. And yes, I understand it's part of the, the difference between the NBA culture and how they view the players as commodities uh, versus, and they build them up as stars, versus the NFL, where it's about, it's about the, uh, the, the uniform and the shield more than it is about the individual players. I get all that. That's consistent with both philosophies. But still, Adam Silver showed leadership in such a way that it emboldened the players, largely an African-American league, the NBA, to come out and speak out against what they feel, and, and properly, social injustice. Um, if they were not so empowered by Adam Silver, would they have come out the same way? Maybe yes, maybe no. It's hard to say. For those who would look at LeBron James and say, well, it's easy for that guy to take the position he does now, and now getting around to your Cam Newton, Michael Jordan point, versus Michael Jordan... Um, who was, you know, in the 1980s especially, the countercultural revolution after the 50s, the 60s and 70s, there's all this upheaval. By the time you get to the Reagan 80s, things had changed a bit, and the dominant culture was corporate, and it wasn't as easy for a guy like Michael Jordan, even if it was in his personality to make social stands, as it was for, say, someone like Muhammad Ali or Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, right? The, the climate wasn't right. And so it's, it, it's kind of easy now to say, well, the climate is right for a guy like Adam Silver to be more permissive about this or even encouraging. The climate is right for, for LeBron James to take a stand. Don't judge Michael Jordan so harshly. The climate is right in the NBA for LeBron James to take a stand. Don't judge Cam Newton so harshly because the climate isn't right in the NFL. Those things are true. But even if the climate is right, it still takes individuals making choices, making courageous choices oftentimes, in order to bring about change. Adam Silver made a choice to get rid of Donald Sterling, to encourage uh, athletes taking social stands in the NBA. Roger Goodell makes a choice to essentially discourage that kind of stuff and influence guys like Aaron Rodgers and Cam Newton, perhaps, to not be so emboldened to take those stands. So yes, the climate has something to do with it, but individual choices do too. I applaud Adam Silver and LeBron James, and I have much less praise in that respect for Roger Goodell. Before we go, it's very important that I make a couple of points. A, Adam Silver is a good man. He's the right successor for David Stern. When you think about Adam Silver, do not hesitate to credit David Stern for the climate that he created that empowered the commissioner of the National Basketball Association to deal with those 30 owners in certain ways, even though the commissioner is answerable to them. David Stern built a level of cachet that was transferable to Adam Silver that positioned Adam Silver to have the power that he had. Roger Goodell didn't have that luck. Let's also make sure that while I give Adam Silver a lot of credit, and again, he's a good man and a good commissioner, don't, don't twist it. It wasn't Adam Silver first, then LeBron James and them who followed. 
it was Chris Paul, the Players Association. I am telling you what I know. I know you're not debating it. I'm just telling you. I'm telling you what I know. It was Chris Paul working behind the scenes. It was LeBron James speaking out. It was those players making it very, very clear that they were going to do something. And let us not forget that the one negative about Adam Silver, and it's not about him because it ain't his fault, we never got a public vote where the owners, we saw who were in favor of Donald Sterling and who were in favor of letting him go and who were in favor of keeping him. Adam Silver never gave us that. And Roger Goodell's got to answer the commi to, to NFL owners who Quickly, think... I don't want to yeah, make it sound like I'm not giving Chris Paul right. and them the proper credit for I'm going saying leadership. They were first. No, of course. And we all applaud Aaron Rodgers for speaking out. But there's another quarterback we need to get to. Three-time Super Bowl champ Mark Schlereth will join this conversation. Colin Kaepernick reportedly has a dead arm. Is he done in the NFL? We answer that next.